Inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, Mint Mobile has given you a much-needed break on your wireless bill. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Order today at mintmobile.com slash gam. They should have turned these children down. When they were like, hey, we want to make a movie here, the, a guy at the desk should behind the bulletproof glass should have been like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Our rooms are actually exclusively for killing yourself after your divorce goes wrong. <laughs> so uh, what I'm saying is we don't have a room that isn't spattered in some amount of brain matter we missed. Oh so no, God. you have to go <laughs> to a double tree <laughs> to shoot your movie. <laughs> Awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because at some point we didn't push back hard enough. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Immunologically superior, Noah. Thank oh, nice. you for asking. Nice. Boosted. Feeling in good health, doing squat thrusts on the hard earth beneath me. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> and also joining us today is our very favorite guest masochist when he's here, at the very least, the co-host of the Skeptics with the K podcast and the host of Be Reasonable, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back. Hey guys, good to be here. Do you know what else I'm the host of? The novel coronavirus. That's yes. the thing that I'm hosting right now. Is this three now? This Marsh? is three. This oh, is three. Wow. Come on. But at least we've kept up our tradition, Eli, of a transatlantic <laughs> viral exchange for our spouses. You know, I bring my wife to you. <laughs> You're right. You give her uh, you give her chicken, chicken pox. pox. Yeah. You bring your wife to me. I give her COVID. It's only oh, there fair. There you go. There you go. It's only fair. It's true. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was weird that you were asking everyone to kiss you on the mouth on the way out of QED this year, but you know, I, I just figured it was like an English tradition. It's, it's a it's a very much a QED tradition by this point. If you listen to the things you write about me online, you know, yes. <laughs> it's a Liverpoolian thing. Yeah, <laughs> Liverpoolian. Come on, that's the greatest word that there is. Let's use it when we have a chance. <laughs> so tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Ah, uh, so we watched Prey. It's a Christian slasher film, eh. but I, I think I, I assume made by someone who's only ever seen like the Dove Channel cut of Friday Thirteenth with all of the killing edited out. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sixteen minutes. So cut. this film is just based on the stuff they <laughs> let in. Yeah. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. <laughs> right. That's really what this is. Like that's really, really accurate. Right, and that's why they think that a movie can be an hour and four minutes long. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and Eli. How bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the final projects of your Christian high school's film class, but you hate the liberal agenda of plot and making sense, <laughs> you will love this movie. I don't say this easily, but this movie could take filmmaking lessons from the goddamn lock-in. It really <laughs> could. Yeah, so to be clear here, what we're about to tell you about is a three-minute ghost story that somebody heard at Bible camp and then they dragged that out to an hour, mostly with very long establishing shots. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst hat? Absolutely. Uh, best worst miracle. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not going to spawn it at this point because it is very, very late on. But all I will say is that we, we've seen Jesus intervene to rescue people before. But this is the best way that has ever happened. <laughs> and it also, it's especially good because it says at the start of this film, it's inspired by a true story. Yes. And when I see how the miracle happens, I want to know more about the true story. Yeah. We will revisit that at the end of the film. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm very excited we have the uh, editor of Skeptic Magazine here to help us yes. debunk <laughs> this, this real <laughs> thinker of a mystery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now, as I already mentioned, of course, this is a three minute story drug out over an hour runtime, which means nothing happens until the final like 18 seconds of the movie. So I was going to go with best worst music thinking something's about to happen. <laughs> right over and over again, we get these orchestral stings of like, huh? Oh, no, oh shit, never mind. I'm sorry. I, I had already hit the button. I was sure because we're 30 <laughs> minutes in that something was about to happen. Something but, huh? must happen. Yeah. My bad. Have you ever heard of Haunted House Rushing? 
So it's an irritating thing and you shouldn't do it. But basically, haunted houses are all basically constructed on the same pop scare mechanics. And so if you wait at a corner for a little too long and then like rush around the corner real fast, you will almost always run into a cast member smoking a cigarette. <laughs> and that is what the music of this movie does. It rushes around the corner and finds this film smoking a cigarette. Right. No, that's fair. And I'm going to go with best worst. And this is a minor detail, but it haunts me. I'm going to go with best worst motel. <laughs> so okay. we'll talk about it. But for some reason, this movie felt the need to have a scene and a half in a motel room. And they chose the most murdery, <laughs> cum and blood and shit stained motel <laughs> these fine United States had to offer. And they did not know it it's insane and what, what's so funny is that you know that the christian high schoolers that made this movie said oh guys they rent by the hour that's perfect for us that's great for our movie <laughs> film <laughs> uh oh let's try not to all eat up the continental breakfast <laughs> what do you mean a guy killed himself on the waffle maker last night <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what, nothing happens in this movie and podcasts don't have establishing shots, so we're going to pad the runtime with an ad and a sketch. But we'll be back in a minute with all the spooktacularity that is Prey. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. If you're like me and you recently attended QED, you're currently dealing with the very real trauma of Sunday Night Marsh Syndrome, or SNM. Okay, here we go. We don't know why or when, but at some point on Sunday when QED ends, Marsh consumes four bottles of Jägermeister and three packs of wine gums and goes on a rampage that can be hard to forget. Wine gums don't even have alcohol in them, guys. Whether it's him standing on a table offering to show everyone his American wrestling moves at the start of the night or later in the evening watching him fight his Uber Eats delivery guy because he thinks he took one of his fries, these are traumas that can last a lifetime. And whether you're wrestling with s and syndrome or just some other difficulty in life, therapy can help. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sure they're going to love this intro. Yeah. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Unlike Marsh, who drunkenly wandered the bar charging people an ugly tax Sunday night at QED. I did not do that. Just to be clear, that is not true. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. BetterHelp, because Marsh had no right to tear your shirt from your torso and declare it tummy slapping night. You know what? I'm glad you lost your passport. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, we gotta think of something for our Young Warriors project. Nikki's right. The Young Warrior for Christ Gathering is just a week away, and we need a way to glorify the Lord in that movie that we promised. For sure. Ashley and Becky wrote a song about how her little brother died in that thrasher. Ah, so lucky. Guys, wait. We could tell... My story. Oh, here we go. What? It has danger, mystery, and of course, an intervention from the Lord. Caitlin, we are not going to make a movie about the time you saw a black guy at the mall. A black guy at the mall after it was closed, Heather. Guys, guys, look, we don't need some half-baked Jesus story to talk about our faith. Let's just tell people what we actually know. The real works of God in our lives. Okay, let's do when Caitlin saw that guy at the mall. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, no, yeah. me neither. Me neither. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on some very pixelated title cards telling us this movie was <laughs> inspired by true events. <laughs> I'd yeah. be fascinated to know what they think that means in yep. this case. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, like, literally everything is inspired, can be said to be inspired by true events if you're broad enough a definition well, that it counts all, as inspired. All inspiration comes from things that happened. Yeah, no, I, I wrote yeah. in my notes the event, them watching a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> also, they, they seem to think that choosing the font is an effect. 
Yeah, we see them go yeah. through, like, cycle through four. And they're also, they're four very boring fonts. It's not like, oh, we're going for like a Baroque and interesting font. Just like, nope. Oh, shall I go Times New Roman? No. Does Ariel work better? <laughs> yeah, yes. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. It's fine. Oh, and then we get the movie's actual opening line, which is, I'm only ever so slightly paraphrasing, the Oxford English Dictionary defines miracle. <laughs> yes. That's what I wrote too. <laughs> yes. And it highlights all oh, act of God at the end. It's like, right, but just because act of God is in the dictionary, that doesn't mean that God is true. You can't like get us that early <laughs> on in the film. Yeah. Also, like, congratulations to the writers for getting all their demands met in the strike. But like, this is why we want AI writing tools. Okay, everybody? Because <laughs> when you leave it to humans, you get writing like this. <laughs> well, when you leave it to bad humans, yeah. Also, I like I love the 17-year-old kid reading this definition because he's trying to do old man smoker voice like in a movie, but they're doing most of it in post. So it sounds like like a you know, like a kid pretending to be a grown-up on the phone. Right. Yeah, it's yeah, got exactly. the, kind of it sounds a, like me with COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. Doing a southern accent. <laughs> so yeah, and I wrote in my notes at this point, I'm like, is this movie 32 bit? Why are the fonts so pixelated? <laughs> right. Now, what's amazing about this is I figured this out later. Because, because like less pixelated fonts don't cost more, right? Mm. But on the editing software, this looked fine. Of course, yeah, right. Because it was tiny; it tiny was little, little and small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when they watched it on like full screen and realized that it looks like shit because they didn't use a larger font size, they went, "Oh, we're not going to go back and change every single fucking <laughs> title card, yeah. right?" That's the kind of effort that went into this movie. <laughs> we're not going to go back. Was the zeitgeist of this filmmaking <laughs> experience? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was like the inspirational motto that they had like pinned on the wall of the editing room. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, hang in there, baby. It's that we're not going to go back. Yeah. What is it that David Lynch has that like a place for the freaks thing that he tells everybody yeah. before they start yeah. the movie? That's, that was their place for the freaks. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so and then we finally get the movie's first shot, which is absolutely nauseating, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's the shaky cam. We're chasing a girl down a boardwalk and she's just clomping. Yeah. This lady clumps like like best worst clumping was definitely at the tip <laughs> of my mind when we when we wrote them out this week. And the, the camera work on this because it's the handheld, it's it's so wobbly that it's impossible to tell whether like we're meant to be someone creepily stalking these women or whether it's just poor camera work. And it takes me ages yep. to figure out which of those two it's yep. going to be. <laughs> yeah. So we see this chick, she's running as classic, like she's running from the killer and the killer's walking behind her and he's grabbing a chain and she's fumbling for her keys. Yeah, I never realized fumbling for keys is something someone could be bad at, but here we are. Mm -hmm. Here we are. She is uh, nope, yep. unsuccessful. It's like she's trying to do like hacky sack with them rather than yes. fumble them. <laughs> So yeah, so but then we cut out of that and a pixelated title screen tells us it's now 48 hours earlier. So we're going to build to that. Don't worry, something's happening eventually. Mm -hmm. So we're now outside of a convenience store. And this is where I realized how bad the camera work was going to be because like it's a go one axis at a time type of camera work. We have to pan and then zoom onto this car. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I wrote in my notes, oh, we're watching the cameraman learn how to focus his dad's camcorder in real time. Yes. What fun. He's like, oh, I wonder what this, but oh, this zooms. This is a T, but it zooms. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because because this at this point, the girls go into like the, the, the retail store, the, the, the garage, and we're yes. in like someone's eye view watching them. And the camera work is so shaky. It feels like the first time I tried a PSVR on. Yes. Like I expected the camera like pan down and the cashier just had like disembodied floating hands and then nothing <laughs> beneath them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking uh, job simulator camera work here. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I really feel like they tied a camera to Larry's head and he's not doing as well with it as he said he would. <laughs> No, y'all, listen up. You just tied to my head. I don't have to hold it no more. It's going to be great. Yeah. So we're going to meet three important characters in this. Well, actually, we're going to meet all the important characters in this scene, four of them. So we meet Madison and Lacey. Those are the two friends that are at the heart of this, two girls that are heading out to a Christian music concert. We're also going to meet Victim Mom. Her, her name is a spoiler, but they never named this character that I'm aware of. We're going to meet her and her 
baby. They're at the store. And also, we're looking through the eyes of cashier who's going to eventually be creepy murderer guy. Right. I, I got to say, I if you could, no illusions, just tell me when we are looking through the eyes of the murderer. Because I lost serious track of who the murderer was supposed to be at any given moment in this film. Oh, God, completely. So when we first realized that this, it, that we're like POV from this cashier, like when he is when he reaches his hands out to take money from them. That was like jarring as fuck. That was the closest to a genuine jump scare. This I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy, fuck. So, yeah. So now, and we see that the, the mom can't afford the crackers for the little girl and the little girl's very disappointed, but Madison, our hero, has a couple bucks she can spare to buy crackers for that little girl. Right, yeah. And, and the mom, she's wearing a soak up the sun t-shirt, but it's it's S O N. Yeah, uh -huh. on it. it's that God. Christians can even make beaches annoying. That is a <laughs> talent that they have. <laughs> Can't they though? So yeah, so they leave the store, and we vomit Cam our way out of the store, following the two girls, and we go to our car. Right, but like we follow them out the store, but we were supposed to be the guy behind the till. Right. So is the shop guy just immediately following him and leaving the shop wide open? Or did he like tag in a different cameraman? It's, it's impossible <laughs> or, for us to tell. <laughs> or did he kill the real cashier? And this is just, I, yeah, it's very unclear. Very unclear. But yeah, so it, and honestly, like the, the camera work, because they're going for killer POV, but they don't know that you still have to steady the shot to some degree here. Yeah. And I had to like, I, le I legit had to lay down after I watched this scene. It was rough. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like if the killer was drunk the entire right. time. Like, yeah, come back here. I'm going to give you one of those strangles. I'm such a fan of. <laughs> <laughs> so now, as if they're trying to calm me down, we're going to watch the mom, the, the, the mom that couldn't afford the crackers, drive home in the dark for like, I'm going to say two and a half minutes. Oh, it's great. The whole, her whole genuine ride home from this Piggly Wiggly, ladies and gentlemen, it is completely pitch black. It is. No idea what's happening. Like we see some vague shapes at one point. You're like, well, that's definitely the outline of a human being. Yeah. Right. You can see the fucking radio because it's got lights on it. Yeah. That's about it. And the thing is, I was watching this movie when I was just starting to come down with COVID and it genuinely made me Google does the new COVID variant make screens look too dark to see? I thought, this must have been me. It must be something about my COVID. Do you think the guy who made this movie like tried to turn the light on and the mom was like, that's actually illegal. I'll get a ticket. And he was like, oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah, right, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, she was worried about getting a ticket. She gets a phone call. She answers the phone while driving in pitch black with her infant child in the car. On a curvy road that's completely unlit. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Forget taking the wheel. How about letting Jesus take the call? That's a much safer <laughs> thing right now. Okay. Yes. As someone who regularly plays Sudoku while they drive, I do not love the yeah, vibes of right. this. <laughs> Conversation. It's, it's okay. It's not like there's traffic in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so that so her husband is calling her. He's going to be home late from work. This will matter. No, it won't. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. And then we. I think. I think honestly, we're just establishing that she's not some kind of whore of a single mom or something. Right. But with this phone call. In fact, it's funny how they mess up this call because she's like, "What's that?" <sighs> Not again, right? Which is, of course, supposed to be like, I'm going to be home late, darling thing. But then she turns the phone off and turns to the kid and goes, Daddy says he loves you. So it was like he was like, will you tell her that I love her? Not again. Right, right. <laughs> this is how it had to pull. So, okay. So, but eventually, at long last, she makes it home. Oh, just, just before she gets home, there is a shot that they are so proud of, which is like the car going down the road. Oh, yes. Like looking at the wheel as it's like the, the outside right wheel as it's driving. And it looks like a fairly standard mm -hmm. shot. But the reason I think they're so proud of it is they've only got those handheld cams or the Larry head mounted cam. So like Larry's <laughs> had to lean out of the car while it's driving here in order to get that shot. He was leaving that in. Right. No, yeah. He, he almost died for that shot. Yeah. So yeah, so she pulls up at her house. She pulls up at her driveway. And then we see the creeper's car pulling up. It's got the headlights off, but it has its running lights on, right? <laughs> like they don't know how to turn those off. Or maybe on that model, you can't while the car's on or something. But the running lights are on. And I'm just like, well, you're not sneaking very well at all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we watch mom get the kid out of the car. We figure that out, by the way, just sort of like, you know, we intuit that. We can't actually see it. It's dark. But she goes home. We watch her put up her groceries. The music fucking pump fakes a jump scare twice in this yes. scene. 
This was the first two times that the music was like, boom, boom. nope, nothing stupid. No, sorry, <laughs> sorry shit just stupid. I pushed the button and we said <laughs> no, go, no retakes. So <laughs> God damn it. One of the suspenseful moments is where she realizes she's left the milk in the car and has to go out and get it. It's like, dun, dun. Oh no, the milk might go bad. Right. Oh, no. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So, also, there's this great moment. We watch her pour juice for her daughter at length, right? And and she can't, like, when she puts the cap back on, the threads don't line up correctly, and she has to take three attempts at it. It's so, the panic, the yes. panic, the white-hot <laughs> panic that fills this actress. They will find out later. They worked for this shot, goddammit. Mm-hmm. But she goes to give the kid the juice and something moves behind the blinds. Oh, oh and the rocking chair is moving. She notices that as well. Right. right. And we're supposed to think this is the bad guy. So, OK, the bad guy moved the blinds like that could be he's opened the door. He's tried again, but he moved the blinds and then like aggressively rocked the rocking chair in a sinister way. That's a very strange plan from this guy. Because it's rocking quite a bit. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of rock going on. <laughs> and she goes over, she's very clearly been directed to straighten the blinds, but you can't really do that with blinds. So she's just sort of like... <laughs> right, to the hanging sliding door right. blinds. Right. Yeah, yeah so the, she just sort of like pats them and they're like... Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I wish we had money for curtains. And then we, we watch her... To uh, play with her kid for a while. It, it gets to feel like the cameraman just got there too early and we're all killing time waiting for something to happen. You said he was going to kidnap this family at 8.05. It's 8 fucking 15. <laughs> <laughs> I, while we're talking about playing with the kid, and look, we can really dwell because this movie is exactly 60 minutes long. Mm. She starts to tickle fight her daughter. I believe, I believe as an American that she starts this tickle fight by saying... Who's your daddy? And if that is the case, if <laughs> yeah. I did not mishear her, I oh. think this little girl should show the movie to her therapist. I think it'll save him a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, right. I missed that. She tickles her for 20 seconds. It's 20 go, it, seconds tickle session. This movie is a whole, is only one hour long. And yes. 20 seconds was this tickle fight. Yeah, a non-single digit percentage of this movie is tickling yeah. a child. <laughs> yeah, no, and she goes, and she, at the end of it, she's like... Pfft. Uh, you want to move the scene along? I'll go check the phone and see if it works. It doesn't. The phone is out. Yeah, I wrote my notes. Ah, she must live next to Noah's neighbor too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was my, my cable that he cut the line to intentionally <laughs> as revenge against the cable company. <laughs> so yeah, I live in a fucked up town, man. So, okay. So then we, we watch her go out to get her phone out of the car. Apparently she's left her cell phone in the car along with the juice. So this is the literally the second time we watch this woman go back out to get something she forgot in her car in the dark. Yes. So she gets in. She reaches away across. She's got to reach way across to get to the phone. Yes. She can't reach the phone because American cars are bigger than my house. Well, so right. it's a long <laughs> way for her to go. Yeah, no shit. And then she looks in the rear view mirror. She sees us. Apparently, we're looking through the eyes of the killer again, <laughs> unknown to us. And she screams. And that is literally all the payoff we get for this nine minute sequence. She screams and that and the fucking fade to black. Yeah. One sixth of the film. And hey, yes. <laughs> podcast listener, let me uh, let me do you the favor that this movie didn't do us. That will never be relevant or have anything to do with the movie Ever again. Nope. So just go ahead and flee that 10 minutes from your mind. Right. No, that was just to establish that. And he means it. Right. Yeah. That, that was to establish that. Uh, oh, I think Marsh can probably get through this film with COVID. It's fine. Like, yeah, not right. right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an easy one. And then we get the title and the title of the movie is Pray, but it's P-R-A-Y. I know Eli spelled it P-R-A-W for some reason last week, but no, it's P-R-A-Y and and. They've included a period. I don't think I've ever seen that in a movie title. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So we get the title drop nine minutes into this hour long movie. And then we get credits over a shot of like the concert at a Christian rock band. Yep. Yep. All the actors are named like British businesses, either made up noises or random letters. It's just like CGG yep. and Twee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 
there is there is Chris Holdsworth, which could not sound more like a store brand Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, if right. You try. Mm-hmm. Like like you know those movies that are like they have titles that are similar to Transformers because they're hoping you'll rent it late night at the hotel. Yeah, the transmogrifiers. Yeah. Right, yeah, the yeah. transmogrifiers <laughs> of Chris Hemsworth. Exactly. Yeah, right. Thank yeah, you, exactly. Noah. <laughs> they got Jack Boston for this one. Well, a special appearance. It's a special appearance by Jack Boston, and I'm like, <laughs> aren't all appearances by Jack Boston special? <laughs> <laughs> did you guys check who Jack Boston plays? I did not. No. no. Uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Well, I, I, I will tell you when we get there because oh. it is it is Ooh. surprising to me. I'm it surprised excited. me about that, that that was their guest star. I hope he's the old lady in the TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> so I was assuming he was the musician that, whose concert they were at at this point. That's that was my assumption, right? Because because we keep seeing this shot of a crowd, and it's like there's there's obviously they they took some video at a Christian concert and then maybe they thought they had to like put a credit right, in there for yeah. him or something but i guess not yeah it's it's it is not that i will tell you it's great oh awesome so okay so the credits wrap up and we cut to the crowd asterisk leaving the concert by crowd i mean literally eight people mm-hmm. <laughs> we and we know and we know that they just left a musical event because one of them has a guitar Ooh. Yeah. Okay. yes he's got a guitar he's got a guitar and my theory here was you know, at the end of the gig, the drummer throws their sticks into the crowd. <laughs> this, this movie didn't know it was just drummers that did that. Right. And so they thought, oh, yeah, he's he, the guitarist has given the kid his guitar. <laughs> right. My next note is like, oh, my God, my theory was right. The kid literally says, yes. he gave me his guitar. Mm-hmm. So I was right. That is what happened. Yes. Sometime during the six and a half fucking minutes of improvised background post-concert chatter that they browbeat out of these poor children. He says, I can't believe he just gave me his guitar. <laughs> yep. Incredible. <laughs> yeah. And this this is also where we get like the first real shots of this hotel. Yes. I wrote in my notes, they're at the hotels we would stay in at live shows if Noah got to choose. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wrote, that seems like a perfectly fine Motel 6. <laughs> um, so... So, and I also, I just, I love this detail. The kid with the guitar has clearly been told, dude, you cannot play the fucking guitar while we're trying to capture this audio. But he wants everybody to know that he does know the opening riff from Enter Sandman. And he is playing that just without strumming. (laughs) He could, he could totally. At any moment, someone could ask him to play guitar and he would go right in it. Also, there's only two people of color in the entire film. Shocking, I know. Mm -hmm. And they switch out in this scene as though the filmmakers doing some kind of Indiana Jones swap with them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so we watch them chatter after the concert for a little while and slowly one by one, the kids peel off to go to their hotel rooms to go to bed. Right. Yeah, they, t- they take uh, an effort to make sure they say goodbye to every person individually as they leave. Because yes. they're like, yeah, that's, that's another six seconds of runtime each. We can get there, guys. We can make it to the hour. Right, yeah. No, what if you hugged everybody on the way out? Except for the black kid. Obviously, you wouldn't hug him. Felt racial. <laughs> Felt racial. <laughs> it kind of did, yeah. So, yeah, so, so but Madison, she, again, our hero, she leaves to go back to her hotel room and we're going to follow her with our creeper cam. Okay, so the thing is, she's walking from the hotel to the rest of the hotel, but outside. Like, why aren't these places kind of connected? Have American hotels not heard of the concept of up? Like, you can have other <laughs> floors. You can go in the building and then stay inside the building as you get to your hotel room. You don't have to, like, walk across, like, a parking lot. And oh, sweet, sweet, That's Marsh. That's like a whole thing. I mean, Americans, if you've, you've seen the size of Americans. We're not doing stairs. We got plenty <laughs> of space. Also, Marsh, as I read that in your notes, I was like, oh, man, we should totally take Marsh to a hotel. And then I remembered how susceptible your family is to childhood diseases, and I was like, we should not take Marsh to an American <laughs> hotel. Do, do not do that. Our immune system is not really rocking it right now. <laughs> so, and this is where we're going to get, I think, the first of I'm conservatively eight different, someone comes up, the person is is scared of them, and it turns out to not be a bad guy or a monster or whatever. That's This is going to happen over and over again. This is my favorite, though, because it's the black kid who she wouldn't hug earlier. He's come up to get his hug from her. She gets scared She it, it, when he sneaks up, and he, she just turns around and Correct me if I'm wrong, but punches him in the dick. Punches him in the dick. 100% the dick. Punches him right in the pebus. Fan theory here for those watching along and following along with the movie. What's this character's name? The girl? Uh, Madison. Madison. I thought I was right about that. Madison, I believe, 
Madison has super strength. I will argue oh. that this is the first established <laughs> right. of several canon events that prove Madison right. has superior strength to a normal human being. Okay. I can think of at least two other ones. Yeah. All right. All right. So, and okay. Now, this is the fucked up thing about this scene, though, right? Because from the moment that she theoretically punches him in the dick, he's going to like rub his dick through his pants as though <laughs> like you know like when you when you hurt your knee and you rub it he's gonna do that and i'm just like hey man that doesn't help right we like i mean it helps but like but it doesn't help with the with the punch like you are clearly just taking advantage of an opportunity to rub your penis in the in, in the vicinity of this girl stop yeah. it i'm gonna need you to stop it Christians do the weirdest stuff to get makeup excuses for an over the pants heat. Can I just say, like, it's a weird. Cult. Yeah, Lauren Bobert's going like, actually, this is pretty tame, really. When you no, I, I punched him outside. You guys yes. just didn't see it because it wasn't on the <laughs> theater cams. <laughs> Oh, there's also a great moment where he's like, I love your purity ring. That means you don't have sex, by the way. And she's like, yes, a lot of men respect me for this. And he's like, I'm sure they do. Why are you rubbing faster? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so she leaves him. She finally makes it to her hotel room, which is eight fucking parking lots away. Yeah, it's in a right? different hotel by this point. She's yeah, taking absolutely. a fucking bus to it. At Marsh, as the man responsible for making me go to the Mercure Manchester uh -huh. Piccadilly Hotel once a year, I will not hear you slight any other hotels, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing I love about this. This is yet another moment where the music crescendos for no fucking reason as though it's trying to like convince you something happened, right? Because she walks into the hotel room, she turns on the light, and the, and the movie wants you to think, oh, the killer's in the hotel room. No, no, he's not in the hotel room. Mm -hmm. But what that means is that she turns onto the light to this crappy ass Motel 6 hotel room, and I know Eli genuinely screams. <laughs> I, I was a pop scare for me. Look, yes, exactly. they, they should have turned these children down when they were like, hey, we want to make a movie here. The, a guy at the desk should, behind the bulletproof glass, should have been like, oh, I'm sorry. Our rooms are actually exclusively for killing yourself after your divorce goes wrong. So. No. Uh, what I'm saying is we don't have a room that isn't spattered in some amount of brain matter we missed. Oh so no, God. you have to go to a double tree <laughs> to shoot your movie. So she goes to take a shower. She puts a televangelist on TV. We see her after the shower. And it's just, it's so fucking sad because like she's getting ready for bed in her sweatshirt and knee length shorts. Being a prude looks so uncomfortable. So <laughs> hot. Yeah. So hot. Ugh. Anyway, so yeah, so she's watching this televangelist and this is so great because he's like, you know, maybe you need some help. Maybe you're sitting at home. Maybe you're in a hotel room right now. Maybe you just left a... Christian concert and punch someone in the dick by accident. Maybe you Madison. have a towel on your head, but strangely, you're still in full makeup. You know, it's, it's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Or maybe you're in a Christian movie right now. So yeah. these are people we're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. By act. But he says, you know, at some point in your life, all the things are going to go wrong and you're going to pray to Jesus and Jesus will be the only one to help you. It'll probably be late in act three. If I had to guess. <laughs> He did lay lay on thick the things are going to go wrong and your life's going to take a downturn and everything is going to suck. Is he trying to talk her into suicide? Does he know what hotel she's in? Right. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, they just play this clip to give people the courage. There's right. that. No, it's, just, the, it's on loop when you come yeah, in. Yeah, it's the Fry's exactly. Dog episode of Futurama on the other channel. They're just, they, you know, that they know they're brand marketing. They know what they're for. Transmogrifiers. Yes, yes. <laughs> And then, but in the middle of the televangelist's sermon, Channel 7 News cuts in to tell us about a bunch of missing people in the area. And we cut to the van from, like, for pre-credits lady, right? Oh, and this bit is so good because you've got the reporter there. The police are, like, looking in the van and, like, doing the sort of forensics in the van. And then you've got the reporter stood basically next to them going... Police appear to be struggling to figure this out. And I want them to be like, we're right here, Emily. Yes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just thought it was cool that they got the footage of the cops trying to find Marsh's stolen car. Because these, <laughs> these guys might as well be stopping and frisking this minivan. They have no fucking <laughs> idea what's happening. Well, and she calls him over, right? She has this interview with the cop and the cop yeah, goes... He stops investigating the crime scene to talk to the reporter. Right. He stops doing the forensic work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no wonder he's struggling. Right, yeah. He's, and, and yeah, she stops to say, why is it taking you so long to go through this van? And he's like, well, you are not helping much. <laughs> 
And she goes, do you think this is related to the other disappearances in the area? And the cop says, and I quote, we're not treating this as a random act at this time. Sure. Yeah. So we're going to assume this is connected to other crimes until proven otherwise. Seems yes. like a really weird position to start from. Yeah. <laughs> also, the police uniform looks so low quality that I can only assume the pants have like Velcro down the sides to rip away quickly. <laughs> so, all right. So that late that night, Madison goes to bed. There's this really weird moment where we see her going to bed. We see that the clock is at 11.22 p.m. And then we immediately flash to 1.37. And then we're like, well, then why did we see that other shot? Like, we would have known if you just showed 137 and she was in bed how she got there. <laughs> yeah. Right? No idea what that was about. But the bad guy now is sneaking into her hotel room at one in the morning. Yeah, I wrote my notes. A guy is just letting himself into a hotel room. I assume she's staying at the QED hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that gentleman was gentle, Mar. She was very yes. <laughs> gentle. Also, watching this killer guy find his light is oh, yes. so fucking fun. Because right, they're going for the frame shot of the killer against the light of the shadow, but he doesn't find it right away. So he's got to do like a uh, feel like a shift. Uh, he has to strafe yeah. a little bit. Yes, <laughs> he has moves a smudge over to the right, and then so he stands there and he's like he's like like contemplating killing her. But just then, her friend shows up. And the chain is on the door now. The chain wasn't on the door when the killer came in. So, like, I guess he just has better hotel security etiquette than Madison did. He <laughs> put the chain on instinctively. Yeah. Yeah. He's killed people in the hotel before. He knows it's not safe. You need to put the chain on. <laughs> yeah. You are not safe otherwise. He's killed so many people in there. Right. So, yeah. So, but the friend shows up. She tries to open the door. She's like, hey, you're supposed to leave the chain off for me. And the killer has to abandon his plan. And I love, so the killer like hides and I really wanted to have just like hidden behind the blinds again, but therefore be like completely visible from the other side of the right, window. Exactly. Right, where the friend is. is. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so she, she comes in and she looks around and she's like, hey, are you sure there's not like a, 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 a movie villain in this hotel room with us? And she's like, I'm pretty sure. And she's like, because the door between the two hotel rooms is open and I don't think we left that open. Yeah. So so they get like so they decide they're like, oh, OK, that's really creepy. We should leave right now at 1 37 a.m. and drive the multiple hours back home on little or no sleep between the two of us. Right. Yes, because you found a door open. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is the safest thing to do. So even if there's like a killer in the fucking area, like you're better off just getting a night's sleep and like making sure you put the chain on this time. Right. Yeah. yeah. But they actually go with something even crazier than let's drive home. Mm -hmm. They call the concierge to come get right. their bags. They say, well, we'll call the attendant and see if he can help us with our bags. And I'm like, you're at a Motel 6. They don't have a fucking bellboy. What are you <laughs> expecting? The only thing the employees of these hotels are used to carrying is the dead bodies of their patrons. Sure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's so, yeah. So, but they call down and he's like, I, I guess I can come up and carry I Technically, it. legally, it's a hotel, but yes. um, <laughs> okay. And he comes up and he is quite an obvious sex offender. Oh, yes. And I, I like, he, he's, his style is 100% creep. And I hope he gets that feedback a lot. Right. Like, at least one bad review on TripAdvisor of like, yeah, nice room, uh, bathrooms are clean. It is staffed by a very obvious pervert, uh, four stars. Yeah. And he's supposed to be like intimidating or scary, but like, no, no offense, but these are teenage girls and this guy has my physique. So like if they do a, a brisk jog to the car, they're out running this guy. Oh, just yeah. Saying. No, they can whip his ass if they needed to. But yeah, like he's like trying to be all creepy, but they haven't given him anything creepy to do or say. So he just has to keep like sitting on the like leaning against things and creepily eyeing them. But but ultimately, he's not the bad guy. He's just going to get their bags and. Yeah. And put them in her car for her and then nothing will happen. Which is why it's so weird that this is Jack Boston. Oh, is it? Ladies and gentlemen, Jack this is Boston. special guest Jack Boston. Oh, Jack Boston. Oh. <laughs> Bringing that Jack Boston magic to every film he's in. <laughs> well, that's it. Exactly right. They're like, well, if we have Jack Boston. We have to use all of the perversity of his <laughs> uh, glare. Clearly. All right. Well, if the characters get to leave, then so do we. So we're going to take another quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Prey. I can't believe Eli insisted on cooking dinner for us. Right in the middle of the record, too. 
All right, here we go. Course number one. I call it fall salad. What could be more fall themed? Am I right? Um, also, I made a pumpkin spice dressing to go over it. Look, Eli, if you're going to cook up some fall themed meals, why don't you try HelloFresh? What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. So you can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And with so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness you can taste. And don't forget to turn to HelloFresh Market for yummy add-ons and enjoy the season's limited-time fall flavors lineup. Feast on desserts like the apple cider cake with caramel sauce, or please a crowd with appetizers like the barbecue pulled pork nachos. And don't forget the mini pumpkin cheesecake, perfect for a me-time treat. Wow, that does sound good and full of fall flavors. But have either of you actually tried it? I sure have. HelloFresh sent Lucinda and I a box to try when they became a sponsor. I love how it unpacks in seconds and that each meal comes with easy-to-follow picture instructions. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse HelloFresh. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Just go to HelloFresh.com slash 50awful and use the code 50awful for 50% off plus free shipping. So I go to HelloFresh.com slash 50awful and use code 50awful for 50% off plus free shipping? That's right. Nice. Hey, aren't you guys going to eat your salad? Eli, this is just a bowl of leaves. I mean, all salad is leaves, Noah. Yeah, but not usually dry ones. Ah! I knew something was different. <laughs> Larry, where you been? I've been calling you for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Hendelbaum tried to hang himself again. And you need to get the towel down from his ceiling. Sure, sure. No problem. Hey, is uh, everything okay? Yeah, I just, uh, man, I had a kind of a creepy experience. Really? What happened? So, you know, room 12B. Uh, that's the one where the guy fucked the armadillo last week? No, nah, man, that's 12C. Uh, the one where the guy filled a garbage bag with mice and then tied himself inside of it? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. What about it? So I met the front desk earlier explaining the one I'd pegged that she's got to pay for the full hour even if a client dies. Classic bang. Right, and the phone rings. Was it the police? No, it was the two girls in 12B. They wanted help with their bags. Hey. I told those girls when they checked in that if they wanted help getting rid of a body, they need to call the number on their hotel key. I know that's the thing. They really wanted help with just their bags. Like bags of cocaine? Like giant no, bags? No, no, just regular like luggage, like bags. Oh, so it was like a trap, right? Like you got there and then they tried to like ply you with wine so they could take your kidneys. Yeah, to get my kidney. No, that's what I expected. No, but they just wanted me to carry their bags to the car and then they drove away. Weird. Yeah. I think they might have been Christians. Oh, no, that's disgusting. Right? Ah, oh, man. Now I'm going to be up all night with the willies. Oh, hey, Peg's at the security gate. I'm going to buzz her in. Hey, you know what, man? You take five. Will you shake that off? Yeah, sure. Sure, thanks. Peg! Peg, whose head is that? Well, I'm not going to buzz you in if you don't tell me. Well, then I'm not going to buzz you in then, Peg. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action, watching people drive in the dark some more. It <sighs> <laughs> goes on for so long. Like, so we, we, make, we, we get 24 in, minutes into the movie. They make it home without incident from the long driving scene. Nothing has happened yet. And nothing happened. Nothing, nothing right? of any use has happened. Yeah. But this is the point where I was like, was the killer in the back seat the whole time and just like got cold feet for the actual murder or were they just <laughs> filming from the back seat of the car? There's no way of knowing. Right, yeah, they don't really divide those scenes up from the regular scenes, so yeah. It's actually it's hilarious if you just think about him, like, sitting there the whole time going, well, it, check, if I strangle her now, she's just gonna wreck the fucking car. <laughs> the, the, well, the other... And the other girl's asleep, and I was really hoping to do her first, but now it feels like just a sort of die in her sleep thing. 
<laughs> it was such a, so I was watching this in Manchester on the Mercure Piccadilly's, let's say, flirtatious internet, which meant that I was <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. watching it on my computer and doing my notes on my phone and nothing happened for such a long period that I set down my phone. I was just like, well, there's no point. In <laughs> well, if you're not going to do anything, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I don't yet. have notes about the <laughs> continuing darkness of this scene. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh God, I've got to write something about this. I found myself looking at the dashboard lights and trying to figure out what error yeah, so uh, lights were on. I was like, what's happening with the engine there? Is, you might get it checked <laughs> out. Oh my God, we watch her drop her friend off and then continue to drive on to her house. My God. So, okay, next morning now, we, after the eventless night, mom is washing her hands at the kitchen sink. Yeah. And look, Marsh, you might want to give this a try. It's a way to prevent COVID. I'm just saying you might want to give this a shot occasionally. (laughs) And look, here's the thing. I know my house is dirty. I'm not saying my house is good. But when I see clean houses in movies and TV now, they look insane to me. I'm like, where is all the things? (laughs) That's not because this is a clean house. This is because this is very clearly like a show house with none of the character of an actual house in it. Yes. And you can tell that because even as we like, we look around to see where the daughter is and we linger around the house. And I've seen like real estate listing videos that linger less on the house's fixtures. All I wanted was to see was some little pop-ups saying like, original file fireplace yes and, uh, <laughs> as we move to the second floor yeah well and then we, we cut up to her bedroom which is like desperately strewn with childhood memorabilia right like again it's obviously a model house and they're like oh no we need uh if we put 16 toys and two pictures and three sashes yeah does she have a raggedy ann crucified on her bedroom <laughs> wall <laughs> yes she yes she does. does yes she absolutely does also, this is the girl who was just driving home from like three in the morning until five in the morning. Mm-hmm. Now she's sleeping in the bedroom of apparently an eight-year-old. I have no idea how old this person is meant to be. She sends yeah. some very confusing signals as to her age in this film. Yeah, I think she's supposed to be a high school. So like between 16 and 18, somewhere in that vicinity. But though, oh, there's also this weird fucking moment where mom's like, you know, your sister's going to be late for school. Why don't you go wake her up? And the little sister, who is neither on camera or on microphone, <laughs> says she'll go wake Madison. We, we just hear, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. She also played one eyed peg in the sketch you heard in the interstitial, everybody, in case you're wondering. We're <laughs> really uh, varied actress, a lot of talent there. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so, but the, but the sister Madison, she's like realizes she's late and she like wakes up quick and runs out of the door and can't, doesn't have time for any breakfast. It's spirit day, damn it. Mm. So we watch her boyfriend pulling up to pick her up for school. So she's not that fucking late. You know, she, if she, right. She's fine. Also, hey, I was very excited to see wraparound sunglasses on something other than the profile picture of a racist tweet. This right? is where they come from, everyone. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly. like watching a baby dinosaur be born. <laughs> oh, 100%. Like, statistically, this guy is the killer. 100% right? statistically, yeah. it's him every time. Yeah. I just, I also love this weird, desperate dialogue because he's like, hey, why am I picking you up if you were supposed to drive straight from the hotel? This doesn't make sense in the movie. She's like, great question. I don't want to talk about it. And he's like, why wouldn't you want to talk about it? And she's like, because that would be really repetitive in the movie. I, it would not make any sense now. And then he almost says like, well, then why would you even include this scene in the movie at all? What purpose does it serve if we can't talk about the thing we would obviously fucking talk about? Right. And and doesn't he like basically finish that conversation by essentially threatening to murder someone for reasons that he hasn't yet heard? And it requires her turning up the radio so loud that she doesn't hear him making these murder threats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. She's like, somebody creeped us out last night. So we drove home and he's like, really? Because I would. And then and then she goes like me trying to keep Eli's Supreme Court suggestions off the air and thus (laughs) us out of jail. (laughs) She cranks the radio way the fuck up. Uh, Lucinda uses that tactic a lot to actually get yeah. um, so I get it I get it anyway this was also the point where I realized they're driving around a lot American suburbs are so fucking boring are like yeah. every single one of these roads are like, everything around them is identical at one point they turn out of the houses and they're driving on roads that go through like some park fields or something and they're just t- taking lefts and rights for no reason because there's fuck all there and it it felt to me like someone went on SimCity and then they built 
all of the roads first before they put anything else down. Yeah. Okay, we've got all of the road <laughs> system. We can now start putting down our little retail and our uh, residential spots. That's yeah. kind of I mean, how I've we got do good it. news yeah. for you, Mars. <laughs> That's pretty much how we did it. Except that SimCity cares if you don't give people water. That's the only difference. Right, yes. yeah. <laughs> and it, except the way that you do it is that uh, you, you wait till people are already living there and then you just wipe out the place where all the black people live and that's where you put the roads. Right. Yeah, and then right. you carry on building from there. Exactly. The American way. To be fair, if you zoom in close enough on SimCity, you can see the native peoples that we bulldoze <laughs> over. It's just, uh, you got to enable it in the settings. So <laughs> you've got to go, have a graphics card that can go that uh, that granular. Yeah, no, you right, right. Yeah. So yeah, but so we watch them. The reason we have to talk about this in our review is because on screen they're making plans for after school. These two, Jesus Christ! Right. So okay, so now it's time for a. I'm going to say three and a half minute being at high school montage. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And again, this is a 60 minute film and more than three minutes is this montage of the world's least decorated high school as well. It's like the high school that they could they could rent as long as, as, long as they took down any distinguishing features, <laughs> yeah. which means the high school corridor we start in is absolutely indistinguishable from a prison. Marsha, I hate to break it to you, but that's... Uh... That's just an American high school, man. I this one's yeah, actually kind of nice. <laughs> I, all I'm saying is I've never seen a building that had insisted on having its identifying features blurred to protect its anonymity. This was a first <laughs> call. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and we should point out, though, this is an entirely hallways and gymnasium high school. There are no classrooms, right? We just Obviously, see them, yeah. <laughs> uh, hanging out in the halls. And then we watch them sports for a little while. And honestly, like, I feel like Heath would have forgiven us if we had called him off of vacation just long enough to talk about this gym montage. Yes. The basketball montage. <laughs> yes. We watch six attempts to shoot a basketball. Every single one of them misses, and then they switch sports because they're pretty yes. sure they can catch a fucking yes. football. We watch four kids in a row miss a fucking free throw, which means that no matter how many times they shot it, they could not get any one of those kids to make a goddamn free throw. <laughs> And then it's a minor thing, but from the basketball, we switch sports. But they can't really settle on which sport they're switching to because they're throwing an American football around at the soccer nets. They're still yes. at the soccer nets throwing the American football around. It's like they have no idea how this works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, th there's a brief moment where we see the mascot come out and they're <laughs> supposed to be the Grizzlies, I guess. But it really kind of looks like they ordered a bear costume and they got sent a monkey costume and they tried to make it work anyway. This is a poor bear mascot. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. That's definitely Jack Boston inside from the amount of hugs he gives to the tween girls in the scene. I can't promise you much, but this is a Jack Boston original right here, this performance. So, all right. So now we see there was a big pep rally that day. We see them leaving the pep rally and we can see that the creeper guy with the wrist tattoo who is the killer in the movie is watching them from the parking lot, not doing anything. Yeah, the tattoo guy, just to remind you, from the shop, that is at least two hours drive away, yes. probably more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you remember that? The movie very clearly doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Madison says, that was the best pep rally ever. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, in that all pep rallies are tied for the worst thing that isn't genocide. Yes, it was the <laughs> best <laughs> pep rally ever. Also, I, I have to point this out because it comes up over and over again in the movie. Madison is Earth's clumpiest person, right? <laughs> if Madison, if this actor ever had downstairs neighbors, she's been murdered now, right? <laughs> that we know this about her. Yeah, she exclusively wears tap shoes at all times. <laughs> Either that or, or she's been shooed by a blacksmith like you do to horses <laughs> and she just can't help herself. Or, let me throw this out there, she has to weight her shoes to prevent her from taking flight as a Kryptonian. Oh, oh. there you go. All right. All right. This, also, this is all starting to come together. The sequel is going to be awesome. So, okay. So then there's this moment where the music tries to convince us something happened, but it was really just like she almost got in the wrong car. Right. And she almost got in the bad guy's car. So was that his plan? To just like park up and hope that the person he's stalking accidentally <laughs> gets in the car and doesn't realize it's the wrong one. And I'd literally written in my notes, that sort of thing doesn't happen. But fun story, 
I paused the film two scenes ago in order to take my cat to the vet. And while I was waiting in the car outside the vets because I've got COVID, someone literally got into my car and said, is this my taxi? And I had to persuade <laughs> oh, them it no. wasn't their taxi. Just as I'd seen this bit of the film, I was like, okay, <laughs> I guess it does happen from time to time. Yeah, yeah. You, you almost feel like you got to turn around and say, by the way, I'm not a killer. You can see my wrists. There's no yeah, It's fine. Are, are you a killer? I, that was like, well, I, I mean, I guess I have to strangle you now. I mean, I yeah. didn't want to. That wasn't what I was planning, but here we are. So yeah, but so she almost gets in the car, but just then Nut Punch from earlier shows up in Heath's car, <laughs> right? And goes, hey, that's not your boyfriend's car. Don't get in that car. And she's like, oh yeah, why would I get into this car? And she gets in the car with him and she, he takes her to the next scene, which will happen at the No Foe Diner. Fuck yeah. Let me tell you what happened. Gather around everyone, take a knee, because a real estate agent and a bad person convinced the owners of this restaurant that that area of fucking Madison, Wisconsin was going to be called NoFo any day now. So it was the perfect name for their venue. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually true? Because this is a real place. This is a genuine yes. place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's actually it's named after North 4th Street. I had to look that up at, at, at some point. Which but... a real estate absol agent yes. absolutely right. made up. <laughs> yes, in fucking Raleigh. North uh, North Carolina or something like that. Yeah, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Because it was baffling to me what the four in no four is meant <laughs> right? to be. Yeah, because it's because the four also has a pig's tail. Yeah. So I don't know why it's it, whatever it is. It doesn't have any of that pig related four going on. And I just wrote American culture is so baffling. That's why. Yeah. That's why I had to look it up. But I'm like, is that a yeah. is that a pork thing? But no, it's not. So it, now we cut to Madison waiting at the dinner. I want to be clear. We are now at this moment. More than halfway through the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and there is still no sign of a plot. Yeah. So the boyfriend shows up with a a pyramid of four hamburgers to eat. Yeah. At this diner. Four burgers. Incredible. And she she's having a diet drink because she wants to uh, make sure she loses weight to be able to get into a dress. And he's eating four burgers, like one, like one mouthful of burger at a time, like one burger bang in the entire yes. way. Yeah, yeah, right, right. You know those boring comics that are somehow still in the newspaper? He's one of the characters from those. Like Dagwood <laughs> yes. or whatever. The, yeah, I don't right, even know what right, they're called, exactly. but he's, he's one of them. fucking Blondie's husband, yeah. Yeah, so, and also, what kind of fucking establishment is this? Because he walked, they're at a diner table, but he just walked up with a paper plate full of loose fucking burgers. Where are they? What is this fucking place? Oh, everybody in this diner is eating from paper plates. I noticed yes. that when we got the establishment shot from above. It only serves things on paper plates. Yeah, this was a you can use our diner for your movie, but we're not using the plates <laughs> agreement. <laughs> yeah. That so, happened all right. here. All right. Yeah. So yeah, there's also this weird moment. We take this weird diversion into the unrealistic physical expectations that young women are saddled with, even while they're still children. And I'm like, not for nothing, but that's the scariest thing we've ever seen on the spectacular right there. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> well done. Also, weirdly progressive, right? For mm. a second, because she's like, Oh, I want to look nice in this dress. And he's like, I think you look exactly great the way you are. But then he's like, Some of your friends could lose their weight. And I was like, Oh, okay. I would like to retract my support for three hamburger yeah. boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's also she's saying that I want to look like this person in this dress. And she says, I want to look like Kira Knight. Now, first of all, that is not a picture of Kira Knightley because that no. is definitely a blonde person. So like yep. they've come up yep. with the name Kira Knightley, but they don't know what it means. <laughs> and he says, "Well, you know, I could be dating Kira Knightley if I want, but I'm dating you." It's like you, this slurring four burger child of a man, could not be dating <laughs> Kira Knightley in 2005 when this film was made. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she she clarifies that too. She's like, "Oh yeah, no, I know." He's like, "You're such a ladies' man." He's like, "No, no, no, I could fuck Kira Knightley right now." And she's like, "Okay." Well, <laughs> I think I'm going to wear blue to the dance. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but then he has this weird talk where he's just like, but, you know, don't underestimate how awesome you are. I admire your faith in Jesus Christ and your commitment to ethical behavior that grows from your Christianity. There's just this weird ass moment where the movie tries to convince us that the hot boy will like us better if we're Christian about it. Yeah, yes. and yeah. Noah, I, I hate to give performance notes while we're on the air, but he actually mm -hmm. says, because mm -hmm. he is jamming these yes. hamburgers. Oh, Riley fucking disgusting. Reed would be like, come on, man, get, just <laughs> get a little, little room. Yeah. You're going to hurt yourself. 
all of his lines are delivered through a mouthful of, uh, like just mouth after mouthful of ground beef. But he's sort of saying as well, like, oh no, you've got so much faith. And he says, like, other girls want to be, want to be you. And then he says, not just because you're with me. So yeah, like, all, all the other girls are really into you. Wellington Wimpy from the Popeye cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is exactly what they're all after. Right. Yes, exactly. Oh, God. And there's also this weird moment where he's like, so go have some food and don't worry about your weight. And he hands her some money and she says, oh, such a gentleman. And then he says, my mama raised me right. With his mouth full of hamburger, I'm full like, no, of yeah. hamburger. I'm just didn't. watching a ha- <laughs> like the cow's eyes are pleading at me from inside this young man's mouth. Just like, <laughs> I thought they liked Chick Fil A down here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well now I feel like we need to prove to Marsh that small mound of cheeseburgers is not a standard American menu offering. So we're going to pause for that (laughs) real quick. But first, let me give what we're loosely dubbing Act 3 for the purposes of our format, the hard sell. Will anything happen? Seriously, any damn thing at all? I'd take a stubbed fucking toe at this point. Find out that the answer to this question is technically eventually yes when we return for the trust us it was worth the wait conclusion of... Pray. No, Andy, I didn't tell attendees they have to pass the Rubicon to get at the final day of QED. Well, I don't even know why you're reading Eli's Facebook. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm getting in the car. I've got to let you go, okay? Oh, um, hello? Oh, um, hey. Do I know you? No, uh, no, you don't. I'm, I'm a local serial killer. Got it, right. Um, oh, are you the person who's been strangling all those families in the area? Yeah, no, that's me. That's my thing. It's always nice to meet a fan, <laughs> you know? I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say fan. No, I, no, I know. Sorry, sorry, it's just a little serial killer humor there. Right, right. Um, so um, why are you in the back of my car? Yeah, uh, great question. I, so I was hiding back here, uh, and I thought, you know, that you would just drive home. And then as you pulled in, I, could, I would jump out and I would... Um, well, I would strangle you. Strangle me, right, yeah. But I've got like an hour commute. You've been back there for quite a while, you know. No, I, no, I know. I, I, like, I brought a, ba- a bag of pop chips. Oh, I thought it was good. Like, I feel like I've seen them everywhere, but I've never actually bought any. I don't, I think, you know, they're fine. I think they're supposed to be better for you or something because they're popped. Because they're popped, sure, yeah. Um, so since I, I did turn around, are you just going to like murder me now? Right, yeah, no, I've been thinking about that. I. To be honest, I've never had anyone just turn around before, so I, I don't actually know. Ah, uh, right. Sorry, no, it's just my laptop bag's there. Right, no, your laptop bag. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I, you know, I think I'm going to head out. Oh, really? Look, I'm sorry. I kind of feel like I've ruined your plan now. No, it's it's not a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll think of something else. All right. Um. Well, I mean, I guess I'll be off then. Yep. Yep. Have a nice trip. I'll kill you later, I guess. Yeah, look, looking forward to it. Nice guy. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero at her home, or as Marsh has described it in the notes, generic house in Boringsville. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is 80% of houses in America, it turns out. Yeah. No, as Marsh's COVID got worse, his titles for the scenes got more and more bitter. <laughs> <laughs> So we should point out, by the way, at this point, the movie starts padding its runtime with excessively long establishing shots, right? Like we, we like, we linger on this house long enough to be like, they really probably should clean those gutters. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut inside mom's in there. She's talking on the phone to dad. He's going to be late coming home from work. Yeah, like every father in not just this movie, but I think every single Christian movie I've ever seen is the dad on the phone saying, I'm going to be late for work. At least if it's act one or two. Yeah, usually by act three, they're showing up. But yeah, so, but mom says, oh, well, you look at this. Madison did her own laundry. She's such a good daughter. Okay, you guys thought that this was going to be like the serial killer did her laundry instead, right? (laughs) I was hoping for some damn thing. (laughs) I hoped it would matter at all, yeah. Just picturing Jason Voorhees being like, you know, you don't have to separate whites and coloreds anymore unless you're using bleach. <laughs> Modern and, you can wash everything cold. There's not heat activated soap anymore. It's, it's <laughs> two tablespoons. Really? It's measure a- it out. Two tablespoons. It's way less than you're putting in the machine. You're over soaping. <laughs> 
side note, and if I can, hey guys, let me uh, let me let me let me bring it down and heath it up here on the podcast for a second because there's 14 seconds left in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did your guys' mom do your laundry when you were kids? Because I think I found the only way in which I was not spoiled as a child. My mom absolutely did my laundry the entire time I was a kid. Okay, interesting. Uh, we 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 split it basically. I, we we had to do all the chores as, uh, ourselves. I think I think she put the laundry on, but we always had to like hang it out. In fact, I once injured my eye really badly and had to have a patch over my eye for a while. And I still had to go and peg the laundry out, even though I no longer had depth perception. And so it was really <laughs> difficult to get the peg onto a line in three-dimensional space with no ability to judge distance. I was almost as spoiled as it is possible to be here. My mom, who had four kids all about the same damn age, did all the laundry and folded it. And she would call us and she'd have all the laundry folded and set out by whose laundry it was on the table, on the dining room table. And she'd call us and tell us to put it up. And we'd complain that we had to put it up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, oh, mom. Amazing. We suck. All right. So yeah. It's okay. She doesn't think you're an atheist. So, That's you know, true. Yeah, that was, she, got, she got her revenge. So yeah. So, but the reason we have to talk about this, of course, is that nothing is happening in the movie, but no one told the music. So mom walks up, she can hear the shower running and she's like, hey, Madison, is that you in the shower? And Madison's like, yeah. She's like, is anything creepy going on? She's like, not a goddamn thing. And the music's like, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> it's a sting right here. I mean, she's she's showering with the bathroom door fully open. That's a little bit creepy. That's it's a little, a little weird. weird. A little I mean, weird, I know it's your own house, but still. Yeah. So, but just then mom goes to put her laundry up and she sees the creepy guy standing across the street and staring at the house, John Cusack style. <laughs> so, and then we cut immediately to the creeper cam inside the house. Right. Again, this is why I need your guidance. Is the killer inside the house at this point? Is this just the camera? What's happening? It's neither of those things. This is yet another pop scare. This is yet another fake out. Yes. Of like, there's someone in the house, but it's not the killer, which would make sense, except she's looking out the window at the killer. So we know it's not the killer unless they've just sort of cut out the sort of the space in between. And this guy just moves like super fast for a big guy. What's amazing is that it's not the killer, but then we will see the killer a minute later in the same spot from POV, right? Because yes, this is another fake out. The mom sees the killer and then she looks back out and there's nobody there. And we see the the camera coming up, sneaking up on her, but it's Lacey. It's the friend from the beginning who we haven't really seen since. And the mom turns around and she screams like she's in a horror movie. And then Lacey <laughs> screams and then mom screams again. Yeah. And it takes them way too long than it would, than it would actually take to recognize each other. And it's, it's right. one of the first times in this film that someone does the, oh, I'm going to turn around and someone there and I'm going to scream. But they start screaming before they fully turned around. So the timing doesn't work. <laughs> And, like, and from our camera angle, it's uncertain. But if you take, if you imagine for a second, it's a side shot. This is just two women who we know know each other are within arm's length of each other, just screaming each other's faces for like <laughs> yes. two straight seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, and then and, and then we cut to creepy guy cam, right? POV from creepy guy coming up the stairs. Right, because he's going to come and kill him right at this very moment. But just then, mom says to Lacey, well, actually, I think uh, Madison's about to go to the mall. And the creepy guy's like, oh, OK, so I guess I'm going to the yes, I, I guess I'll just do it at the mall. Fuck. Yeah. We watch the camera be like, fuck, I got to go to the mall now. I wanted so badly to flash cut to him trying to find mall parking. Right. Just like, how can how can there be so much parking and I can't get anywhere close to it? <laughs> I feel like I should just park far away at one of those spots that's very clearly open, empty. But one of these has got to be open. I'm going to do one more circle. One more circle. I wanted him to come up the stairs because they just finished screaming. I wanted him to come up the stairs and then they would be all screamed out and they'd go like, look, I get you're very creepy. Don't get me wrong. The mask and everything. But we just screamed. I don't have it in me. Can you go out and come back in? Yeah. <laughs> like they're both like bent over, like like catching their breath when he right, comes up. Yeah. Like, oh, God, I'll be with you in a second. <sighs> okay. Okay. You can shock me now. It's fine. There's also, yeah, right. there's also this completely stupid moment where the mom says to Lacey, she's like, hey, when you were coming up, did you see a strange car outside? There's nothing. I mean, it's just a car. It's just a car. It's an SUV. I mean, it's strange in that America is still obsessed with fuel inefficiency despite global warming. But like other than that, (laughs) there's nothing strange about it. I was going to say it's Raleigh, North Carolina. It's probably the only car for miles that isn't rolling coal, right? That's probably my computer. (laughs) So, yeah. And then, so, okay, we're going to go to the mall, but on the way, the camera lingers for a second on a missing poster from the pre-title screen mom. 
this was very nearly my best work. I this loved is it the so greatest. much. <laughs> there are three things about this uh, missing poster that stood out that were just uh, incredible. First of all, it has the street name before it has her name or her yep. picture, mm-hmm. like she's a missing cat. And it doesn't matter, like, because the, the name of the cat isn't the bit that matters. It's where it went missing. Right, so I'm yeah. sure it's the same mm-hmm. with women. Then it says, uh, like, details about it. She's got her name. Then it says, has green eyes. You could have done without the has. It's just, if yep. you just, just, just try green eyes, it, eyes just green. green eyes. Yep. Mm-hmm. But then yes. it says, wait, colon, unknown. Yep. Oh, I Amazing. love that so mm. much. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> why would you include her weight if you don't know it? They don't make you include it. Right. Even if yes. you do know it, I don't know that you need to put it on the missing person because no one's going <laughs> to weigh her to find out if it's her. Like, well, I think it's her. Let's stick on the scales. It might not be her. Let's see. Uh, oh. Sorry, no, we're looking for someone 110 pounds. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, <laughs> Whoever this duck tied woman is in the back of a van, that is someone <laughs> else's problem. <laughs> I would like to volunteer all my worldly goods to be in the room when the director was like, uh, cool. So it's a missing poster. So I'd put your like height and weight. And she was like, you can put unknown (laughs) weight. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so then we we cut to Madison showing up at the parking lot and then the fucking mall parking lot is as empty and barren as a Mall parking lot. Sorry, it's on both sides of the equation. There's really nothing else you can do there. But despite that, we still get to watch her drive around looking for a parking space for I, it's two minutes. Yes. Yeah, it's a long time. And then in this entirely empty mall parking lot, she parks next to the only other car that is, and it's also about as far as is possible to be from the mall. It's an incredible right. decision. But no, her. it's like, it's the, it's the meme with all the urinals of parking. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So she parks right next to this other car and then she like pulls out her phone and it's out of battery. We have to establish that her, that her razor phone doesn't have a battery or enough <laughs> yeah. battery. Which is, can I say, entirely unrealistic. Okay, those phones never ran out of battery. I have a Razer phone in my desk drawer that's been there since high school. I'm pretty (laughs) sure if I turned it on right now, I'd be at 80% and I could play Snake on it for 17 hours. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, so and now it's time for a her hanging out at the mall killing time montage. Hey, what's the only thing more boring than watching a character read? Watching them shop for books. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. The, the montage starts with her with her, her buying books. And I, I really wanted like a full shopping montage, but in the bookshop. So like she's trying out books while her friends are giving like the thumbs up. No. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Not book. that book. Not that book. Yeah, right, right. I was in here last week asking to buy the Twilight books. Big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, no, but like now the movie has established that she's supposed to be meeting a friend of hers at the mall, but then the movie forgets about that entirely. And we just watch her like look through the bookstore. She shops for shoes. She looks at some smart tops. I just say, look, look, if this movie and if she just like went home after this and went to bed and the movie just ended, I would admit defeat. I would say that for the first time, the Christian movie won God awful movies. (laughs) Yeah, I would. And then if the credits had just been like, gotcha, you wasted an hour of your life. Noah, Heath, Eli and Marsh, you did it. (laughs) We win this. I I can't say how many times I wrote in my notes, my kingdom for a 2x speed button on Amazon Prime. (laughs) Oh. What if we got to the end credits and like so nothing happens? We get the end credits and it was directed by Heath Enright. The ultimate revenge. Yeah. We watch her shopping at TJ Maxx too. Like it's funny. Mm. You never count on why shopping montages are usually just friends hanging out in movies, but then you watch her shop at TJ Maxx and you're like, oh yeah, no, that is boring to watch. Or as Marsh would call it, TK Max, like the weird British pervert he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so uh, like we we hang out here long enough that you could make the argument that the entire movie to this point has been one long establishing shot for the mall, and then <laughs> we get the guy come on the the intercom and he says, uh, "the the store is closing. Please take your final purchases to the register." And she keeps perusing handbags. Oh, yes. the worst. And it's really clear that the the person on the tannoy is the bad guy. Right. right. It's the kidnapping guy, the stalky guy. So like that means that his plan was to isolate her by going to the mall, breaking into the tannoy room and announcing to everyone that he was there and what he was like, where he was looking to find her. Like, and that everyone should leave and then count on her yeah. to not do so. Yeah, right. 
Also, so he walks by at this point, right? And and the movie said, once again, the music's like, see, something happened. And we're like, a guy walked by her at the mall. That's nothing. That's nothing happening. The music's like, yeah, no, that is that is nothing happening. I'm so sorry. Oh, that was the sting. Yeah. At this point, I was like, they they shouldn't just let any filmmaker have access to that suspense sting. Like, you should have to earn (laughs) the suspense sting. Or at least there should be some authority that can take it away from you when you use it like this. Yeah. Yeah. Much as I had to podcast before seven years before I was finally granted a soundboard, you should have to make a certain amount <laughs> right, of moving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we should not live it, let you have a, a soundboard. And then so at this point, they start turning off the lights and she runs into an old lady and everybody screams again because that's just how she people body are. checks this old lady <laughs> she does. so fucking hard. Again, more proof of my superpowers thing. Oh, this uh-huh. woman is injured. She's like, whoosh, and she's like, <laughs> oh, you knocked the wind out of me. Okay. We've been closed for 30 years. Shit. Oh. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> right. Because she's like, we've been closed for 35 minutes, but she does it in the, but my daughter died 20 years ago this very <laughs> night voice. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. She goes, and by the way, the Madison says to the old lady, she's like, by the way, your announcer, your male announcer on the radio scared me. And I'm like, why? He literally <laughs> just said, bring your final purchases to the <laughs> counter. Were you scared that you were going to have to pay for that shit? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, what he said, and we, we skipped over it, but he said, thanks for shopping at Kruger's. Like, Freddy Krueger's. Oh, of, I see. Uh, and that's not the name of, of the store because they're at TJ Which is Maxx. a grocery store. Yeah. We didn't <laughs> we didn't establish which which store they were in. Right. But like at any point. So when they said thanks for shopping at Kruger's, I did not know that that was not the name of the store or the mall. Right. I no, no that's idea. I assumed they didn't that, give that, that was yeah. what it was too. Yeah. And uh, having spent a lot of time around a British mall, I'm now aware that Brits will just name their businesses any old fucking thing. So why wouldn't it be <laughs> yeah. Kruger's? Right, right. <laughs> it's not three random letters from the alphabet. What fun. <laughs> <laughs> So, and after the third time, she's like, and by the way, your male employee who is on the intercom very masculinely, masculinely, malely talking. And so finally the old lady says, but ma'am, there's no male employee that works here. (gasps) And she's like, I need to leave. And she's like, well, you'll have to walk all the way through the empty creepy mall because there's only one door that's open. And we're like, well, how do you get out then? You just would use, (laughs) I don't believe you, but. Yeah, you're lying. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I've worked in a variety of malls. And when Noah dies, I'm sure I will work in a few more. So I completely understand being annoyed that someone's there after close and you being like, oh, no, you've got to walk around the fountain and then through the water. You'll find a key below beneath one of the pennies. Yeah. No. <laughs> So and then uh, like this is what I started to have in my moment. We're like, what? Well, what if it was a male employee and that lady's just trying to creep her out, and the fucking killer has just been sitting in her back seat now or under her car, going like, I don't know. The mall closed half an hour ago. How the fuck is she not <laughs> yeah. back yet? She's a little discipline. She's a little discipline. She said she'd be home at four. Like honestly, let's talk about because this is based on a true story, right? And I think this is the true story it's supposed to be based on. It's like, one time I went to the mall and it was closed and there was a guy there and I was like, yuck. Yes. yes. (laughs) No, it's going to be that. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. So we watch her walk through this mall for so fucking long. It's literally over two minutes, right? Now, I I should say, we, we watch her walk through for two minutes. She gets to a door. There's a janitor that she can't get out of the door. There's a janitor there. She turns around and screams when she sees him because that's how people react in this fucking movie. Right. Yes. Also, to be clear, the janitor is a guy. So the old lady was lying. They yes. do have a male employee. <laughs> they have a male employee. Yeah, right. uh, the only killer. other employee we've seen is male. Yeah. Also, it's very clearly one of those knobby doors where you just yes! twist the knob. Like my notes in order are, ma'am, it's the twisty knob in front of your eyes. It's the knob right there in front of your eyes. The knob, the exit is behind you. Twist the knob, the knob. And there's though. even the, the, knob. the janitor's even there to lock it back now. She wouldn't even have to leave <laughs> yeah. the door open. But he's like, no, you got to go all the way across the mall. And the, and she turns to the directly to the guy and she's like, wait, do you mean that after two minutes of walking through the mall, the, the audience is now going to be treated to two more minutes of me walking back the way I came? And he's like, that is exactly what I fucking mean. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> So we watch her walk through and then finally, finally, 50 minutes into this one hour and two minute fucking movie, the bad guy shows up. 
Right. And did we all have finally in our notes? That is literally the note that I have when he turned up in Block <laughs> Capitals. Yeah. Finally, we've got the killer in this killer film. Jesus Do you Christ. know how long I've been waiting in your car? I was out there for, I was like a dog that dies from a bad owner. <laughs> God damn it. So, I love to, because she screams at this point, the, the janitor can't possibly be more than 100 meters away at this point, right? Like, that's the furthest he could. So he's probably just like, you know what? Fuck her. I just, I hope the killer gets her. She's in the mall oh, after hours. Her. You know, that murderer's been around this mall lately, and I, I, I her, I volunteer. <laughs> Also, they're trying to do the like killer walking and she's running thing, which has been shot really well in other horror movies, but isn't realistic as we learn when she quickly creates a hundred yards of distance <laughs> yes. between yes. her and this ambling gentleman. Right. Well, it only works if the bad guy is supernatural, right? And is able to appear behind you regardless. Yeah. When it's just some dude, he's like, well, now I I don't see how I'm going to catch up. Now you're far. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why running is better. <laughs> well, <laughs> luckily for him, she's the stupidest possible person. I shit you not at this point in the movie, she runs in and she hides in the display window facing the hallway <laughs> that he's in. Yes, she hides in the glass display cabinet. He'll never think to look at me. <laughs> he, for me he, here. he he flops around. So they do try to do kind of like a pop scare yes. where he's like, ah, I'm here. But the way he does it of like, you're in the display window. Like this is the mo this you're being displayed right now. It's <laughs> the exact opposite of a hiding place, if you think about you're, it. You're on display. I kind of feel bad <laughs> killing you right now. It feels... It feels like I'm playing this game on easy mode, is all I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, it feels right, strange. Right. So, so, yeah, so, but she turns the deadbolt to the door, like, mirror there or whatever. He shakes it furiously as though as a certain number of shakes, the deadbolt is, like you know, going to give up. Which, to be fair, it's it does. Like, well, this is, that's way too many. It does, though. He's right. He's <laughs> correct about this. It is three. <laughs> and then she runs, she deadbolts it. She runs like, I'm going to say 23 feet away, right? She hides partway behind a counter, but then she prays to Jesus. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So she prays to Jesus. She's like, Jesus, like, get me through this. Now the door's open. No idea why. I guess the fucking deadbolt got as sick of the rattling noise as the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Eli's fucking super strength theory really comes into its own. Okay. He pops up behind her, killer style, and she instantly knocks him unconscious. <laughs> she smacks him unconscious. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I think one of the reasons she's able to do this is his plan to sneak up on her was to be a, a very obvious store mannequin. And that's not worked out well for him. Because those <laughs> yeah, that's true. You can, it's very easy to knock those over. Well, he's all dehydrated from hiding in the car for three and a half <laughs> hours. I get it. Well, and he had a sprint to make up that big head start that he gave her too. Yeah, right. right. So yeah, he she smacks him once. He falls unconscious. She starts to step over him. She picks up his brick. And I started chanting in my fucking office, brick, 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 brick. But no, no, she doesn't smash his head in with it or anything. I will say, if we had gotten a full Game of Thrones head pop here, this <laughs> would have been worth it. I might protest this episode. I think I'd be like, yeah, this is great. Right? They had just been it. like, all right, everyone, yep. Yep. we have exactly $1 for the rest of this movie because we spend it all on the practical special effects <laughs> of Steve's head exploding under a cement block. So, so yeah, and then so but she steps over him. She goes into this room where she sees an exit sign, but she still can't get out because she doesn't have, hasn't figured out how the knob works or whatever. So then she has to, like, she prays to God again. Uh, apparently, now that she's got his ear, she just won't leave him the fuck alone. She's like, Jesus, <laughs> help me find an exit that's open. And he's like, yeah, okay, cool. I'll Morpheus you the fuck out. They're under the red signs. I don't know really what... I can't <laughs> yeah, the no to slap everywhere. the guy unconscious. <laughs> Just everywhere. Yeah, so she has to step back over him. Now, at this point, and you guys help me out here because I don't know what the fuck's going on. He has her car keys, mm -hmm. right? Are they her car keys? I thought these are the keys to the mall that she uses to get out of the door. Oh, okay. All right. That's possible. But like later on, we're going to like imply that he had her car keys at some point. Right. Yeah. I, I think these are the mall keys. But then I was thinking, okay. well, how is the guy who works at the garage that's a three hours drive away? How has he got access to the keys to this mall now? Do they think just anybody who works in retail has like a, 
a skeleton key to all shops. Well, yeah, no, I think he killed the guy who does the announcements, right, and took his keys. <laughs> so we're, we're filling in a lot of this plot in off camera. Yeah, right, right, aren't we, though? Yeah. So, yeah, so, but she gets the keys, she runs out, and now he's not unconscious anymore and he's chasing her again. I don't know what we're supposed to think is going on there, right? Well, yeah. She runs out and she's like, Oh, thank God I've escaped. It's time to stop and start crying exactly six yards from the building where yes. my pursuer is still <laughs> right. currently in. Yeah. <laughs> she runs down to water at one point. I was like, are you friends with fucking Aquaman? Why would you run towards water when you're right. being chased? She hides under the bridge that goes across the water. And I thought as she hides on the bridge, he starts to step on the bridge. And I thought, oh, I hope she asks him like a riddle to prevent him crossing. <laughs> Oh shit! I know this one. The uh, the fox and the grain. You take the grain <laughs> together. Oh, God, no, there's a no, and the grain. Yeah, and then you go and get the fox. Shit. <laughs> so, but then, so, but she gets him. Like he walks by her, and then she goes to run the other direction. But she clumps so much that he can hear her. <laughs> Those yeah. clumps were foreshadowing. Damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this catches this catches us uh, with the beginning, right? This is the her fumbling for her keys, trying to get into her car scene that we saw at the very beginning. We've it's been forty eight hours now, I suppose. Yeah, she gets in the car and he makes it to the side. And remember, he grabbed a chain at the beginning, but they didn't have slap her car with chain money, so mm -hmm. he just stands there being like, "Oh, if there was a way to get through this force field, you call yes, the car right, window. Right. I would yes. give you a real murdering young lady." Also, she's trying to start the car at this point. Yes. So by the time he gets to the car, he sort of, rather than doing it, he sort of leans in as if he's going to help her with the ignition. No, you've got to sort of turn it. No, don't put your foot on the clutch for too long because you're going to flood the engine. Give, give it a moment. Give it a moment. <laughs> no, no, you got to, you got to, so you're doing it too hard. You, you've locked the steering wheel. You need to jiggle the steering wheel. Yeah, no, it's an automatic <laughs> transmission thing. It's, it's actually good if you're like, oh, skidding. But the, but the car won't start. There's not even, they don't even bother to do the car won't start noises. I thought it was because they they're lazy. It's, it's even better than that. But then she says, Jesus, <laughs> please start my car. And I'm like, yeah, because if you've got the superpowers, use them right away. Also, but this is also where I started making notes of like, you know, like, why didn't you just start with Jesus, please give this guy a coronary, right? Like that would have like, saved you two prayers. You're just not thinking this through. You're using your powers wrong. Yes, yeah. But the the car starts and she drives off and he just stands there swinging his chain like, oh, I should have smacked the fucking window with chain, the chain. Hit the God car damn it. with chain. the chain. Damn it. Damn it. What was I even thinking? I was just so excited to have it. <laughs> so, and OK. And then she makes it home without incident. We cut to like her mom and her dad now chatting after she's told them this story and gone to bed that night. <laughs> right. <laughs> and of course, we introduce dad by mom like standing there wringing her, her hands. He comes up behind her. She turns around and screams. Why does everybody turn around and scream at every single thing that's happening? Can someone just like react to another human being's existence in a normal way? I feel like everybody would just start wearing bells in this house, yeah. right? Yeah. Can we have a new rule where you've got to say, is anyone there before you turn around? <laughs> and they have to answer. I just want to see this family at other events. Like they're doing right. the first look at their wedding and she turns around and he's like, oh, and she's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so mom and dad talk a little while and they're like, wow, that story she told us, it sure was creepy. It's a good thing that God intervened and kept anything interesting from happening at any point in this movie. And this is what I wrote in my notes. Oh my God, the entire impetus for this movie was someone watching a slasher movie and saying, well, you know, if they just prayed to God at this point, then nothing would, they would have got him out of this entire mess. And them showing us that. Yeah. Yes. Although I did still have hope at this point because I was like, wow, there's, there's 10 minutes left. They're going to have to really work to like resolve that whole missing lady plot from the start. No, nope. no, they won't. They'll, nope. they'll just not she do that. forgot mm -hmm. about yeah. her. So dad's like, well, you know, she said the car wouldn't start. And I, so I should probably go check on the car. What mm. I'm really concerned about is the car. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, if she flooded my engine. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't do that. We know nope. she didn't do that. She uh -uh. sure didn't. He goes in, he pops to it, he looks in. Now, we don't see what's in the engine, right? We just see his reaction to what's in it. And he's like, honey, you need to come in here. And we all had this same thought of like, oh, my God, the fucking, let me guess, the battery is missing and Jesus started the car anyway. But no, exactly. it's so much dumber than that. He says, and I quote, 
The entire engine is missing from the, the car. entire <laughs> engine. This is the greatest. The greatest. Debunk medicine. that, Marsh. <laughs> Debunk oh, that. This is incredible, and I, I love this so much. Again, this was my best worst because. This movie claims it was inspired by true events. Yep. She drove home without an engine. But leaving aside the miracle aspect, the bad guy removed her entire engine the to entire, stop her escape. He could have just yeah. took the battery. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a six-hour job to, to, yes. to take an entire engine out. You need a winch. Like The yes. engines, they weigh like 300 pounds. Exactly. And, 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 they, and, they, and they're connected in a number of different places. So many places. <laughs> you need like different types of, like so many different wrenches. And, <laughs> and where did he even put it? Like, right. Did he winch it? Like take it? Did they drag it? out to the water like no wonder like the lights went off in the mall it took him forever to get the back yeah. to get the engine well that's out. what it is he was waiting so long he was like oh you know what I'm in the back of the car I should go take the battery out in case she tries to run away and he waited for another hour and he's like <laughs> and he's like well or, you know what now I'm gonna take the whole goddamn you know what Gary you know what Gary you've done the battery thing before and I think you've earned a treat let's take out the whole you know end. you're an overachiever that's what they always said about you in school <laughs> Jesus Christ. And that's the end of the movie. But we get these amazing fucking credits. There's still like seven minutes of credits, despite the fact that only four people were involved in the making of this film. Fuck yeah, there are. So first we get eight comes up and it's like, you know, with it's uh, Matthew 1926 with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible because the Bible has no profundity whatsoever. And then we get the the credits are rolling. Like we get Madison talking to the cop that was interviewed before with the with the tearaway pants. Right. When? Right. When is that happening? I don't know. Or why? Because she drove home. Right. No, this was. And, and again, I think the movie has forgotten that that kid, that that murderer or whatever, that missing lady was like hours away in a different town, possibly in a different state. Yeah. Why would they? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so and then we, we get that and then we get the kids sitting around a campfire with Guitar Kid going like, this whole story is such obvious bullshit. This wasn't inspired by true events. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Hey, were you uh, were you late home from the mall once and you told your insane Christian parents that you were stalked by a serial killer? <laughs> yeah, she said that most people think I'm lying when I talk about it because I'm obviously fucking lying Right, about because it. this is not a true I'm thing. I'm 100% lying. I could not be lying more. It happened in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the one kid goes, wow, it's like something out of a movie. And I'm like, slow down, movie. Slow the fuck down. <laughs> I mean, it is like something out of a movie, but it's like, it's a bit of the movie that you then go on to put a lot of other stuff around to make it a movie. Like, right, yeah, 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 like, right. No, it could it's like be six minutes from Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I love too. They got they have like the rest of the cast listed alphabetically in the in the credits by first name. And then we get a blooper reel. We do get a blooper reel. We get to watch and we get to find out that like mom had so much more uh, trouble opening that juice than we could have possibly imagined. <laughs> yeah, we were really saved a lot of footage. They also, I don't know, like, look, I almost never feel bad for the people whose movies we review, but watching these people have fun making this movie, I was like, oh, they had so much fun making the movie. And then I remembered that they were like, oh, if you get murdered, it's your fault for not praying hard yeah. enough. And I was like, okay, right, then I'm back to him. <laughs> yeah. Also, they all got bed bugs from that hotel. So, you know, it's, it's, it's all. Yeah, probably, out. probably. And syphilis. Yeah. All right. Well, Marsh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And I promise the next movie we do will have some sort of incident at some point. I you do not, not promise that. that promise. You yeah, cannot thank keep that you. promise. Yes. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Prey. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because the spooktacular is just getting warmed up. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Lindsay Parker is trying to move on with her life. A new job, a new town, and a new home. However, her new home comes with an unwanted presence. Gripped by fear of this evil spirit, she exhausts all the ghost hunters, spiritualists, and charlatans she can locate. And charlatans? Yeah, and charlatans. <laughs> When all seems lost, she turns to a couple recommended by her secretary as having experience in these situations, desperate to rid her life of this unnatural spirit and not wanting to lose her home to the presence that walks the halls. Lindsay contacts Dr. Paul and Claire. Armed with the truth and the spirit of victory, they triumph over evil, showing Lindsay that fear leads to bondage, but truth and faith can bring deliverance. Spoilers. We'll be watching... 
unwanted presence. I let the, the blurb for the movie tells you how it ends. That's incredible. <laughs> the movie, yeah. That's incredible. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 424 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Michael Marshall for hanging out with us today. Be sure to check out his show, Skeptics with a K at Be Reasonable, which you'll find linked in the show notes. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling Alias, Citation Data, d and Minus, and The Scaptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rod Slack, and we have address on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Nolution's promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The bad guy went on to kidnap five more women, but none of them asked Jesus to help, so uh, fuck them, apparently. Clearly. <laughs> there is a sequel to this movie, and you bet your asses will be watching it. Noah went on to qualify that promise the next movie Marsh reviewed would contain an incident then. <laughs> <laughs> My voice was not stretching too female. Uh, no, yeah, no, I got it. No, no, you had to be the guy. You had to, yeah. <laughs> Just putting this down in your permanent record, not a team player. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I uh, share. I share COVID. I share lots yep. of things. Yeah. Yep. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.